a present for auntie. Rita wants to gift Divya auntie her favorite nuts so that she recovers soon. Let us read how she tries to escape from her friends when she reaches the nut hill before her friends reach there. To collect those nuts, there lived a girl named Ritu whose quaint little cottage was nestled amid lofty mountains. Ritu's village was quiet and peaceful, but it was also isolated. There was a small mountain stream running through the village, which divided the village into two. The sound of the crystal clear water running down the stream was audible to all the villagers during the night. In the morning, the villagers would hear the beating of the drums at the community center, calling everyone for the morning prayers. This morning daily routine of drum beating was exercised by Ritu's aunt Divya. She had strong hands which she used for beating the drums. The sound of the drums would reverberate and echo in the hilly environ. But today there was no sound reaching out from the center. Ritu found it strange and disturbing. She started getting worried. She started having dark thoughts that something had happened to her aunt. She thought about going to her auntie's house but that that would mean that she would miss her morning prayer session. She did not want to start her day by missing out on her prayers. So she decided to go to the community center. Surely somebody there would have some information about her Divya auntie. In the community center, Ritu looked for her auntie. But she was nowhere to be found. She asked people around. But nobody knew where she was. Ritu began to get anxious. She tried to calm herself during the prayers. But found that she could not concentrate. Her mind was preoccupied with thoughts about Divya auntie's whereabouts. As soon as the prayer session ended, she started for her auntie's home. On the way, she had a thought. Should she go empty-handed to her auntie? Would it not be better to take some gift for her? She wondered what she could take for her. Her auntie loved almonds. This was the season of almonds. Ritu decided to gather some almonds for her. With this in mind, Ritu took a detour towards the mountain top where the almond trees abound. It was cold but fortunately she had a shawl that she had taken with her when she went to the community center. She could just visualize the look on her auntie's face when she would present the almonds to her. After eating the nuts, her auntie would make beautiful necklaces using the almond shells. The almond shell necklaces made by her were famous throughout the region. Many people from nearby villages would travel far to buy them. Ritu decided to gather enough almonds to make 50 necklaces so that her auntie would not only relish the almonds but also be able to make a sizable amount of money. She tried to guess the amount of money she would make by multiplying 50 with rupees 50. But she was not good at maths so she quickly abandoned the calculation. She was jubilant at the thought that any amount would be good enough. She knew that her auntie would be extremely happy by her thoughtful gift. Ritu started singing a song while walking up the steep mountain. To her surprise, she saw her friends on the mountain also going for gathering almonds, although they were quite far away. Ritu was worried she had to hurry or nothing would be left for her. The other girls would gather all the almonds. She started running towards the top of the hill. She arrived at the top panting and little short of breath. To her delight, she was the first person to have reached the top. The others were still far behind. The ground was covered with nuts that had fallen during the night. Ritu began gathering the almonds while humming a tune. She used her shawl as a bag for holding the gathered almonds. It was one of the best shawls that Ritu had, but she was glad that she had it with her. So instead of a handful, she could carry so much more. She decided to wash the shawl thoroughly after going back home. Suddenly, she heard voices. The other girls were also reaching the mountain top. Ritu began feeling a little anxious. She had not invited the other girls to come with her. They would be upset with her for coming here early in the morning without them. They might even pick up a quarrel thinking that she was just plain greedy. There was only one thing left for her to do. She must hide before the others reached the place. Ritu looked around trying to find a place to hide. She saw a clump of bushes on one side. She ran towards them and hid herself as best as she could. She wasn't sure if she had managed to hide well and prayed that nobody 
nobody could see her. She held her breath so that the girls would be unable to hear her. From behind the bushes, she spotted seven of her friends climbing towards the top. All the girls were bigger and stronger than Ritu. The girls stopped at the edge of the group and looked around in surprise. Oh no, we are late. Somebody has already gathered all the almonds, said the oldest girl. There is not even a single almond left on the ground, said the youngest girl. All our time and effort climbing this far has been for nothing, said the plump girl. I wonder who came here this early, said the shortest girl. Ritu, she must have come here before us. I saw her leaving the community center earlier. This made Ritu very uncomfortable. How did they guess it was her? Look, there are footprints here. She must have left before us. Quick, we should hurry. We might catch her on her way back and we will be able to take all the almonds from her. Good idea. Let's go. We will get our hands on those almonds and teach Ritu a lesson she will never forget. Yes, she deserves a good spanking. During all this discussion, the tallest girl in the group had been standing silently on one side. Finally, she said, No, that is not right. After all, we we did not get up early. We spent our time sleeping while Ritu got up early in the morning and came all this way. She deserves the almonds while we deserve nothing. We should have woken up early to gather the almonds. The other girls looked at her sheepishly. They knew that they had gone too far in their remonstration and that they were wrong. They did not find any almonds simply because they were lazy. They hung their head low and silently started back towards the village. Ritu was astonished and relieved. She thanked God for answering her prayers and for keeping her hidden from the other girls. She just stood there for a while and reflected. Suddenly, she shouted to attract the attention of the girls and started running after them. The other girls were taken by surprise when they saw Ritu running towards them. I am very sorry that I took all the almonds. Here, we will share the almonds. Take some for yourselves. We are all good friends and we should share the things that we have, said Ritu. In a rush, the girls were silent. They looked at Ritu and then they looked at each other. Finally, the youngest of them said, No, thank you Ritu. You deserve all the nuts because you woke up early and came here to gather them. No, don't be silly, said Ritu. I really want you to have them. I gathered all the almonds because I wanted to gift them to Divya auntie. Today, Divya auntie did not beat the drums in the morning and I thought she must have fallen sick. But she will be happy that I shared them with my friends as well. Yes, she is sick. I saw her talking to my mother yesterday, telling her that she had a cold, said the shortest girl. That is a nice gesture, Ritu, of sharing the almonds with us. We will in turn give all our almonds to Divya auntie. Then she will get better sooner and resume beating the drums. Everybody agreed to this idea. The girls put their arms around each other and began singing as they walked down the hill which by this time was bathed in warm sunlight. All of them were headed to Divya auntie's 